Hey friends, so today we're looking at wireless tracking once again. And I wanted to bring a couple things together in this video because I had just finished writing a script that is added to YPry and I wanted to go over that a bit. What we're looking at right now on the screen, this is a Wi-Fi beacon tracking system. You have both the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi being tracked using these devices right here. One side controls Wi-Fi. The other side controls Bluetooth. So if you have Bluetooth headphones on, you're being tracked. In fact, here's a little known fact. Did you know most hearing aids have Bluetooth running in them right now? So you are actually being tracked by your own hearing aids. And that's something I discovered by a family member who has hearing aids. Hearing aids make him extremely trackable, a very accurate tracking reading off of where he is, just based on him wearing those hearing aids. What I suggest, and I will go over more on Bluetooth in the future, what I suggest for now is turn off Bluetooth. That's a simple solution. You turn off Bluetooth, and if you have a phone, like a Pine phone or an old, another Android that actually has plug-in headphones, use those or use one with a micro USB and you can also get converter cables in order to turn your phone into a plug-in auxiliary headphone so I suggest doing that just turn off Bluetooth all the time don't use Bluetooth unless you need it and this is so much more prevalent than anyone actually realizes there's also handheld tracking as well something like this where it has directional antennas and it also has other broader antennas on the sides this is meant for tracking different types of wireless and this is actually featuring an Israeli company that's doing interception kits there's evil twins where you can actually have false malicious Wi-Fi this can actually work long distance one thing people don't realize is in a a study setting they were able to actually track or at least they were able to pick up using a high-powered receiver 300 kilometers away the MAC address for Wi-Fi people who have the means who have special access to technology are going to be able to track your Wi-Fi address much farther and a lot of times people will say well what about a lot of spoofing is available and yes that's true in fact I'm going to be introducing a new script that I wrote today towards the end of this we're going to talk solutions but one thing you need to keep in mind is even with spoofing of different types the most general types that you'll see out there most of them use invalid OUIs and that stands out I've read papers on this they they just don't count the MAC addresses that have invalid OUIs that allows them to narrow down a likely MAC address leak by your system to one of the actual valid OUIs and in fact a lot of privacy operating systems use a method where they keep the real hardware OUI they only spoof the last three octets now I'll just tell you personally I don't think there's something so horrible about that but what I'll tell you is why I don't agree with it the reason why probably only uses valid OUIs and I tend to enjoy using the cell phone and smartphone mimic mode is because it has a much larger range of potential MAC addresses with valid OUIs and if you were to use one of the more common just spoof the last three sections of the MAC address well what if your MAC address your permanent MAC address had ever connected in any period of time in the past all they would have to do in my opinion is simply narrow down and only track the interesting OUIs and then you can have a much smaller segment of potential real MAC addresses in your lineup to me it doesn't make as much sense just because and I'm not criticizing anyone for using this I think it's still very helpful in fact I've used it myself but the reason I didn't go with this is because of the fact that if you have ever directly connected well there your permanent MAC address is already in the logs is already in the logs of devices in that vicinity and so in my opinion it is not as effective as a much larger range of smartphone addresses there's long distance 
Wi-Fi and wireless tracking. And our devices give off more identifiers than just our MAC address that is at that current time. And a lot of those spoofers only spoof during a, a new connection sometimes. So it all depends which one you're using. And I also put in for static addresses a MAC address leak prevention feature, which I also added to the new script, which is called Wi-Pri List. I'll be going over that shortly. If you're in an environment anywhere, most depart a lot of department stores, in fact, are using different types of tracking for your smartphone and smart devices, and, of course, hearing aids for Bluetooth. It actually is able to then map you out due to the identifiers that are given off. And there's other identifiers, such as the signal strength, and that's another thing I incorporated into YPRI, was to allow you to have the option to spoof the signal strength. You can just spoof the signal strength alone, or you can use the A flag, lowercase a flag, simultaneous changes, both the host name, the MAC address, and the signal strength to entirely randomly chosen values. It appears as a new device in continuously changing randomized times and addresses. This is an example of a guy walking using YPRI with the lowercase a flag. Well, at first he looks like an Apple phone. He's got this MAC address for Apple because he's using the smartphone OUI list. And he has the RSSI signal strength of the 51 you see here. Host name is my iPhone, very generic. That's something I also want to answer here. Somebody emailed me about host name changes. I don't think it makes much sense to add host name changes to boot. And l let me tell you why. The reason I say that is because ideally you're just going to want to use the most generic host name possible. Now, YPRI offers you the ability to use randomly generated and chosen host names, including both completely generic and also very distinct. But you don't want to use distinct host names all the time. I'm using host name of laptop here and localhost here. Localhost used to be the most common Linux host name. Systems are uniquely identifying every device by its operating system using a host name like Pop OS or Alarm or something else that gives away Manjaro, something like that. Those host names give away exactly what you're running on your operating system. So I suggest to everyone, try to stick with generic host names like localhost. That's going to make you blend in a lot more in the overall picture of tracking and networks. You're going to have a much less identifying host name by using localhost or computer, something very simple like that. So I do suggest that. And as mentioned, this lowercase a flag, so you start out with this large span of signal strength. That means all your any identifiers you have are give, given off in this range in general. This is the Wi-Fi based trackers. This is their range. They pick up anything that goes into this circle of signal. And these signals cross, giving away identifiers in this small segment here. But on the other hand, since it's continuously changing randomized changes at the continuously changing randomized times and signal strengths, here the change happened. It changed the host name, the MAC address, and see if your device is set to auto connect to certain Wi Fi names, it can give away the host name in that as well. So you got to keep in mind there are purposes to all the flags and there are situations where they're used, but you really have to use your best judgment. And if you have questions, you can always leave a comment. Happy to help there. This shows a question mark because it's out of range. So it doesn't, none of the trackers were able to pick up the device here. So it's completely disappeared from the range of the trackers in this example picture. This is just a diagram example. And then in the end frame, he has walked and it has changed once again to a completely different host name, a completely different signal strength range, and also a different phone brand. Using this flag can help if you're on travel on foot or something, you might want to use the lowercase a flag. One way that devices are tracked using, say, trilateration, you have these three trackers here that track by signal strength. What they do is they measure the signal strength 
each one gets off a device and then they basically meet in the middle. And so if there's a strong signal here, you can assume it's closer to this one. If there's a strong signal here, you can assume it's closest to that one. And if the strongest signal is given to this one, you can assume the phone is closest to that. You can then use a little bit of math to find the location of a device. But because the signal strength is continuously changing at continuously changing randomized times and values, it can add some confusion to these kinds of trackers. The original YPRI is this. That's the original YPRI and I'm still, and in fact I just added some updates to it, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and check out the Gidea Onion site. This is YPRI list, allows you to create, maintain, random but valid MAC addresses for smartphones or something else. The default is smartphones because I know those are the most common devices that are out there. If your device is being tracked, at least it blends in with the rest of the smartphones out there with Apple and Android phones. Go ahead and check it out. YPRI list to add a new MAC address. It'll generate it from the valid OUI list and you just use the lowercase a flag. Doing that created this new MAC address here, added it to our list. If we want to check out our entire list so far, we simply use the L flag here for list. And as you can see, it has the MAC address list. And every time you run YPRI list and the lowercase s flag for that command, it will then select one of these in, in the permanent list at random. And you can also remove the ones you don't want to have anymore on your list. And this was also something that people like the idea of. So it was also by popular request is the reason I created this. Remove a MAC address simply by doing the R flag, for example. We'll go ahead and show that. What's the purpose of this? The purpose here it actually allows you to make permanent, false permanent MAC address lists each boot. If you install the YPRI list command at boot using the install.sh script that comes with YPRI, which you can use to install YPRI list at boot if you like, randomly chosen permanent MAC address from the list at each boot in that case. But you can also run it as a command. You can also run it as a command. First, I have to stop my current YPRI command so I'll go ahead and stop that here we'll try it out first you have to set the device using the lowercase d flag and then it'll select one of these at random and as you can see it selected this at random it basically holds that MAC address and prevents it from leaking the permanent MAC address, the actual hardware's permanent MAC address. You can also run this in the background it's quite easy to do so you just put that right there, ampersand at the end, and then it'll run in the background. Simple as that. So now it's running in the background. I'll go ahead and stop it. Stopped it that way. And if you want to install it as a command, you simply run the install.sh and you can rerun the install.sh command as many times as you like. So if you want to change your current installed YPRI command for boot with the leak prevention on static MAC address settings, you can simply type yes to install a boot and then what you have to do is you simply add the command you want and you can also use YPRI list as it says right here you can answer it with commands you want to run at boot 24 hours a day for YPRI or YPRI list it's completely up to you which one you want to install it as so that is YPRI list that's the new script and I wanted to introduce that today make sure to share this like subscribe and I'd love to hear your comments below what do you want to see in YPRI next is there something else you want to see or do you have any questions on how to use it I look forward to reading your comments below and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy